So my name is Jenna LeCount Heinley and I am the CEO of HARC and we were honored to be the ones selected to do the third party evaluation of the CV Housing First first year. So CV Housing First, as I'm sure you guys have heard, is one component of what uh, our region is doing to address homelessness. We have some great shelters out there and this is considered another approach that uh, we needed to vet to see if that approach was successful. So, HARC uh, was able to take some of the existing data in the HMIS, which stands for Homeless Management Information Systems, that's mandated by HUD. So we were able to take that data and produce these outcomes uh, because they collect great data already. So we've got data that they collect upon intake and upon exit. We also created a custom survey that uh, was used for three months of data collection, and so we have that a little bit at the, at the very end. So this is just the very highlights. If you want to get into the nitty gritty, I have a 60 page report you can read, but uh, I, I understand if you don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so this is very high level. The, the full report is available if you have any questions or I can answer them today. So uh, we found that Path of Life Ministries has served 401 clients in the first year of Coachella Valley, Coachella Valley Housing First. Um, the largest chunk of those, as you can see, are in homelessness prevention. So that is people who are about to lose their homes and who uh, are able to stay in them as a result of the uh, intervention from Path of Life. More than a quarter of these clients are children, uh, about half are Hispanic, 85% were living in poverty before they came to Path of Life, and 51% uh, originated within Desert Healthcare District boundaries. That piece is important for the district as, as the matching funder. And uh, here's what I think is really um, uh, an illustration of the need, is most have been homeless for more than one year during the past three years. So this is chronic homelessness. Um, and the reason why Path of Life is serving these is because their approach is to reach the most vulnerable people and house them first. So we have, not everyone has exited, mainly because many of the programs, such as rapid rehousing, are meant to be a long-term solution. So the clients are meant to stay in it for a year, two years, et cetera. So they haven't yet exited, and that's a good thing, because that would mean they were exiting too early. But of those who have exited, 81% exited to a permanent destination. So that's very encouraging. Most of those are exiting to a rental house with no subsidies. They're uh, able to continue that and sustain that on their own. 89% have exited because they completed the program, uh, which is also very exciting. We have 25 people who exited to a temporary destination. That's typically one of our emergency shelters that we have here in the Valley, uh, the Rescue Mission and Martha's Village, as well as the, as the Path of Life uh, shelters that they have. One of the things that I think is really impressive is the average monthly income. When people first came into the program, they were making less than $630 a month. Um, needless to say, that is not sustainable. Um, there's no way they can sustain housing on that. When they left the program, typically the average income was nearly $1,500. Still very low, uh, but it's more than doubled in their how, time. How did they reach that amount? How, how did they get there? Had they doubled? Uh, more than doubled their income. How do they go about so that? So a lot of the Path of Life um, uh, services allow them to have job training or um, job placement or um, s building their skills in terms of looking for jobs or resume jobs. But I think the principle of housing first is the idea that if you put someone in housing, all the other things will fall into place, right? So you can't have a job if you don't have a house. So by enabling them to have a house, they are more likely to be able to have a job. And so I think that um, represents that change. Uh, we took a look at who's funded by CVAG dollars and who uh, was Path of Life able to reach via their other dollars. One of the reasons Path of Life was selected as the uh, as, as the provider for this particular service is that they do have these other funding streams and they are a active with those. So it could be, um, we could reach more people. You can see that most of the CVAG dollars went to a homeless prevention program while none of the leverage funding uh, was used to pay for that because the other funders um, cannot support that. 
The other difference is that um, the leverage funding paid for street outreach, which is going out to individuals and, and um, doing intake on the street, and permanent supportive housing, which that is meant to be an ongoing program. That, are, that is for the people who will never be able to sustain housing on their own. Can, can you just explain a little yes. bit further about what homeless prevention programs are? What, do, what does that mean? That would be a better question for Path of Life, and I'm, I'm sorry that they're not here, but uh, it's my understanding that much of their homelessness prevention program involves uh, intercepting and, and getting some of the open-ended questions that and the responses that I saw were that they were able to keep them in their home by negotiating with landlords. They were able to um, keep them from getting evicted. They were able to do financial counseling to get their affairs in order so that they could pay their bills and wouldn't lose their home. That sort of thing is my impression. But again, I'm a numbers person. I'm not the one doing the nitty gritty. Thank you. Stan, could I uh, chime in on that? Because um, it, it seemed to me that we, we've seen a couple of articles in the Desert Sun just in the past couple of weeks. Um, there was one talking about the fact that 10% of the kids in one of the schools are actually homeless. Um, another one, which I think was in the paper this morning, was talking about the number of people who are actually working but periodically are homeless in the process we're talking about one woman who had to live in her car for a while. She would be near a gym so she could get ready to, to go to work. Um, and I think that it's trying to get to that group of people uh, who are just borderline yeah. being homeless. What I have heard anecdotally um, from working with Path of Life is that many people who are living paycheck to paycheck, all it takes is one thing, yeah. right? Is your car breaks down and all of a sudden that one thing has thrown your whole world for a loop because there are no savings to um, to take up for that, um, which is why Path of Life actually has a, sorry, this is a little off topic, uh, an interesting uh, fund, and Council Member Carnival knows more about this than I do, but they have a fund for sort of creative solutions. So for instance, they were recently um, moving people out of a, an encampment and one person needed a starter for their truck to move, be able to move out of that encampment. So it's the little things like that that can actually make it a large was, uh, difference. Uh, financially, that um, about 30% of the population couldn't afford more than a $400 hit in a given month uh, without uh, not being able to be able to pay their uh, monthly bills. So. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, one way to look at the success of this particular program is the way that HUD defines success. Um, and their def definition of successful pl placement is anyone who's moving along the continuum in terms of homelessness. So if you're on the street and they reach you via street outreach, it's a success to be moved into an emergency shelter because that's the immediate thing that you need. If you're in an emergency shelter, it's success to move you to, say, rapid rehousing or to permanent housing. Um, Certain destinations don't count. For instance, if you leave the system to go to a hospital or a medical facility, those are too complex to categorically say successful, not successful. So those are left out. So using the HUD definition, we calculated uh, successful placement. So first we looked at street outreach and Path of Life has had 31 people um, exit their street outreach program. All have been successfully placed. Just for comparison for you, Riverside County overall in HMIS, their average successful placement for street outreach is 31%. And that's for the people that qualify for that, correct? Uh, I mean, you get 30 people that, I mean, it could have been 100 people, but only 30 qualified? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's really, I'm disappointed the Path of Life isn't here this evening. It's kind of, uh, hey, you, you do a terrific job, you really do, and I hate, <laughs> hey, we're not picking on, we're not killing <laughs> no, the messenger here. No, but absolutely, you know? I'm not the expert on the on the ground okay. stuff. Appreciate it. Um, so then we looked at the other programs. You've got a really high successful placement in the CVAC funded programs, and part of that is because so much of it was homelessness prevention. Um, and that's not to minimize that. Yes, they started in a permanent home, but because of this, they were able to stay in the permanent home. So that's not to be discounted either. Um, when you look at the leverage funded, that's emergency shelters, permanent supportive housing, and rapid rehousing, the successful placement rate goes down significantly. 
But it's worth noting that many, that two of those programs, permanent supportive housing and rapid rehousing, are meant for people to stay in them for a long time. So that's relatively few people we're talking about there. And just for um, comparison's sake, although it's very apples to oranges, and I apologize for that, I couldn't parse out the different programs from Riverside County. But the Riverside County average for emergency shelter, um, temporary housing, uh, permanent supportive housing, uh, all grouped together is 40%. So to give you a, a ballpark to, to play in, essentially. Um, Jewish Family Service of San Diego used to run uh, Roy's Desert Resource Center as an emergency shelter. And because um, it, Roy's was a shelter and operated under the emergency shelter model, that's very different from the CV Housing First model. Uh, so again, we've got this apples to oranges thing. But it's still instructive because part of the purpose of CV Housing First was to use a new model to fill the gap left by Roy's. So Roy's served a little over 4,000 people in the three years that they were uh, in operation, whereas uh, CV Housing First has served 400 in, in the first year. So it's definitely a smaller uh, amount. The chronic homelessness is much higher in CV Housing First. 70% of these clients have been homeless for more than a year, whereas at Roy's, about 28% were. So the, the chronic homelessness is much higher in CV Housing First, again, because they are strategically targeting those who are most vulnerable. You've got about equal amounts of clients who were in a homeless living situation prior to entering the program, 66-64%. And again, this reflects very much the difference in the models. So at Roy's, because of this emergency shelter, it's meant to be temporary. It is not meant to be a long-term solution. Thus, the minimum number of days spent was zero. The maximum was 120, and most people spent a little over two weeks on average. In contrast, at CV Housing First, the maximum number is over 1,000 days, and that's in permanent supportive housing, which again is those people who will not be able to live on their own sustainably. Um, the average is 159 days. Again, we have the successful placement rate, but it was not apples to apples at all, so I pulled out just how many people had been tr um, seen as an emergency shelter client, since that could be more apples to apples. And 36% of the emergency shelter clients that have gone through Path of Life have been successfully placed, per the HUD definition, um, and Roy's had about 2%. And that is because most of the people leaving Roy's didn't know where they were going to go. We also created this custom survey to measure some additional outcomes, but uh, we didn't get the full year of data collection. Uh, we only had a, the last few months. And most of our participants were in the homelessness prevention program. So we pared it down to just look at outcomes from the homelessness prevention program. One of the great things we saw is medical usage dropped. There's fewer ER visits, no ambulance rides. And most people who were in the homelessness prevention program, by the time they got out, were able to have their usual source of care to be at a doctor's office instead of an ER or a hospital. The satisfaction with Path of Life and CV Housing First was extremely high. More than 95% of the clients agree or strongly agree that they were satisfied, that Path of Life helped them, that they met their needs, they loved their navigators, and they felt listened to and heard. We had a couple quality of life indicators, and again, these are really small numbers, but it still helps illustrate um, how, how the program is changing lives. People who used to have to go hungry no longer do, people who are unemployed are getting a paying job, and people who need medical care are being able to access it. So um, our evaluation demonstrated that Path of Life has served more than 400 clients. Many have not yet exited, and so one of the things that we recommend is continuing this evaluation for the next year or two to see um, the outcomes of those clients. Of those who have exited, most have exited to a permanent destination. It's considered successful by HUD. And the Homelessness Prevention Program is especially successful. And as one client said, your services made a big difference in our lives and everyday living. Without your services, we would have been homeless. So that's all I have. Do you have any questions, which I may or may not be able to answer? Do you know out of the 400 and, and some clients that they served, how many of those were Cathedral City? Two. 22. 22. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And um, of those, 10 were in emergency shelter. Four were the homelessness prevention program. Two uh, were 
placed in rapid rehousing, and six uh, were targeted during street outreach. Um, and I don't know if you know this question or, or if Erica does. Um, the $9 million and some, and some change that the county is, is looking to get through um, Senate Bill 850, um, how much of that is, do we know is coming to Coachella Valley? Or do they have made that determination? That is an Erica question. But I believe it's based on your unsheltered point in time counts, so, of which yours is fairly so is high. It, so, yeah, so each, and, and I don't know the details, so each city is going to get a share based off of that, that homeless count? That is my understanding, the unsheltered so we homeless want, count. So we want more homeless to get more money. Unfortunately, I, I think it's based on the 2017 count, not the 2018. I'm, I'm making a smart alley count. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, because you have already declared a shelter crisis, um, I imagine, and again, I'm far from the expert, but that $9 million is getting divvied up between those cities that announce a shelter crisis. And so the fact that you are one of them and the fact that you have a high unsheltered point in time count number of homeless people uh, means that you'll get a larger piece of the pie, to my understanding. Um, and just a, another, you know, in your report, I brought this up um, on Monday, I bring it up again just to make sure, is that um, uh, your, none of your clients, or none of the 402 had any contact with law enforcement. Not quite. So the only um, way that we measured that, we found that HMIS does not capture that, and so that's why we added it to our custom survey. So we only had data on 26 people from that because it was late in the game. So that's why we encourage um, CVAG to and Path of Life to continue using that tool that we developed with all clients that Path of Life serves going forward so that we can get a good picture of that. So right now, the only thing I can tell you is those 26 clients didn't. Actually, one of them did. When I narrowed it down to the 23 homelessness prevention clients, no interactions with law enforcement. The others, there were two that had interactions with law enforcement, one that um, had one interaction and the other said that they had 80 interactions over the past two years. So not good data based on two people <laughs> and definitely something that needs to be explored via using this tool more often and with more clients. And, and maybe another, maybe there's a question for Erica. The, again, going back to the nine million share that uh, the county is going to get um, that can be used for um, uh, path of life's ministry to do uh, shelter or housing first that's the heat money please mayor thank you very much um uh for, to answer your first question my name is erica felci i'm the governmental projects manager with cvag uh thank you first of all for having us and thank you jenna for um the report um i didn't hear a breakdown the county talked about the nine million dollars that would be available and i don't recall them breaking it down by jurisdiction what cvag as you know from on monday did do our executive committee is asking every city to declare an emergency uh you know a, a crisis and then what will happen is there is a timeline over the next two months where you would submit projects to the county and then there's a evaluation period. Uh, we can work with your staff to get you the exact dates. Uh, there is, a, I think it's a late November, early December deadline and then the county submits something. So um, there's a process through that. Uh, the CVAG has talked, uh, it was talked about at the Homelessness Committee, right. uh, that there could be some regional projects talked about, particularly in the uh, the west, the western part of the valley, um, but that hasn't been announced yet or finalized yet. We are working with our jurisdictions, um, and even if there was a regional application submitted, uh, it would not um, deter and should not deter cities from also submitting. Uh, we see us as competing uh, for these dollars countywide, not competing with ourselves within the Coachella Valley. And, and, and again, you may not know, but. It I'm making an assumption because most grants and most funding like this, there's some sort of a local match that needs to, mm. I, I, I don't see them, I've never seen the county give us money without they wanting something from us to, to, to participate in that. So. Um, I, I'm, I don't recall the match component being I, I don't, discussed. I, I and I, I, I'm not even sure that there's one. I will follow up, we'll send an email though to council and staff to, to follow up on that. Um, on, I, on know, that I, I don't know all the details. 
I'm making an assumption because, like I said, the county usually doesn't give you any money without you having to contribute to yourself to getting that. They are, they are state funds that are coming in, but uh, yeah. the state also, I would say, also has some usually match requirements. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because I think that we need to, as we look at funding and we look at our budget into the future, we need to have some funds available that we could use as a match to, so that if we did put in for a, a, a grant or a program that we had something available to, to offer as a match in case that was a, a and, um, and requirement. That, that request for proposals will come out from the County Continuum of Care mm -hmm. on November 1st and you'll have uh, about a month and a half yes. to create those proposals. And so that request for proposals will have details about the match, if there is one. Um, I'm just making an assumption yes. that there is, because yes. I've never seen them not put something like so that. So you'll know there. by November 1st at the latest. Um, and we'll follow up off, uh, we'll okay. follow up with our county partners tomorrow and, and uh, respond to council <clears> accordingly <throat> on that. And um, I would just say, uh, appreciate the comments too uh, earlier. Um, uh, by Councilman Carnevale. Um, as, as you, um, as Mayor Henry knows and Councilman Carnevale knows earlier this year, we did um, change Path of Life's contract slightly to expand services. We've uh, heard from the city about some uh, needs and wanting to better address needs. And so certainly throughout this first year, we did address that. And now that we have the um, data that we had wanted and some, um, you know, some numbers to go with what we're doing, we can look at how we are progressing with services in the next year of the contract. And that is something that the homelessness committee will be discussing in November when they meet again. Do you, do you get, and I don't, and, and Mark, you may know this, do you get a, a report monthly from yes. Pathway of Life's on, on the change of the contract as it, it relates to dealing with those homeless uh, that are homeless, that our law enforcement deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. There's one that's provided on the homelessness committee agenda, the uh, a breakdown, and they are on the they are on the agenda usually to give an update. And there, um, many of our nonprofits and and including Path of Life and many of our partners, including Cattell Valley Rescue Mission, are part of our homelessness committee as ex officio members as well. Erica, you said they give a report because I've asked Damon for reports before and he said he didn't have any. There's updates usually in the homelessness committee agenda. Um, Path is usually listed at the end as a report. Okay. And I believe we've provided those to you as well, um, but we're certainly happy to follow up on, on that if need be. Okay. There are there any uh, other questions from council? Uh, probably a couple, not questions per se, but uh, I was actually at the um, uh, Desert Healthcare Board meeting mm -hmm. uh, last night. I want to congratulate Jenna for getting funded again for the thank survey you. to continue. And thank you all uh, so. for contributing. I appreciate your 5,000 as much as I appreciate the district's 400,000. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was a slight plug. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, the Desert Healthcare District, of course, is providing matching funds of uh, 2 million, I believe, over a period of time. Up to, yes. Up to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, they're actually, uh, they continue to be supportive of this program. I want to uh, see it continue long enough to make sure that we understand what's happening and how it's happening, so. Yes, and actually uh, I have a, a call with them on Friday because they want to cut the data different ways and, and look at success rates in different ways. And as I've said, I can cut the data a thousand different ways. I just need to know which way. So I think that um, at that call we'll have some good directions for um, future data collection to make sure that all of these um, interests are, are really captured. And Erica, just as a, a kind of a follow-up, you said that Pathways of, of Life Ministry gives a report monthly. I would like to see in that report how many contacts of homeless they've had in Cathedral City um, uh, of, you know, uh, of not only those that are in the homeless program whatever that criteria is, but those that are actually homeless and are actually living on the streets that we're having to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, and um, uh, I will pass it along to Cheryl, so that way um, as we're formatting the reports in the future, we can um, talk about that. Uh, the point of origin is sometimes difficult uh, because uh, sometimes where we encounter somebody is not necessarily where they would consider their 
home base, if you will. Over the and, and maybe they can say, and, I'm, I'm from Cathedral City, but they were contacted in Coachella. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and also, to, um, and also um, just to address the law enforcement question, not to belabor this, mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, when the uh, extension was put forward or the change in scope um, and refining the scope for PATH earlier this year, we did address, um, I think this is something that uh, Councilman Carnevale uh, referenced earlier, uh, the CES system, the coordinated ent entry system with the county, uh, you, um, you speak, usually, if you encounter a homeless person, they get put into a system, and then the highest priority uh, individuals are then assisted. Um, and we did include funding. We've heard from cities about there are some um, uh, folks that you encounter more often than others in your community. Certainly, you know them in your community. You want to get them the help that they need. So we've included funding into the PATH contract to address some of those outside of the CES system as well. Okay, because I can tell you where, tell them where to go every day. I see them. <laughs> Any other questions? No, no question. Great. Thank and you very much for your time. Thank you. I know this was a, an informational item and, and for discussion and direction. The only direction that, that I would like to see, because I won't be on the council when the funding issue comes up, is that we do have some funding available um, for any matching funds or for our police department, wherever you decide to pull that money from, um, to be able to deal with the the homeless that pathways on life aren't necessarily hitting or some of the others aren't hitting that we're having to see and, and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis because right now they're they're pulling it out you know they've they've dedicated an officer and they've dedicated a, a supervisor to doing it and that's out of their current budget uh, and they've had to move things around to do that so um, i think this is a big enough issue that we're seeing well, and that, i think the the costs of removing encampments and things yes, has to be taken so into account going works, forward too yeah. Police department, I would, I would suggest that you track your hours uh, and what your costs are, so that that would give us a good idea of what future council may want to look at as far as some sort of funding um, uh, for the future. 